Corey, and today I am joined by actress extraordinaire, the lovely Miss Julia Nixon. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm really glad to uh, discover your podcast. Um, I love to walk, and now I have a whole new bunch of episodes of, of people that I really have enjoyed watching over the years uh, to listen to. Well, it, it, it makes exercising so much more fun. <laughs> 30, 33 to choose from so far and counting. Yes, I just saw you had Dustin in from uh, his, uh, I guess, newly uh, uh, new arrival from Vietnam. I'm so excited. Oh yes, he he was fantastic. I really liked him. He was. Uh, uh, oh, I've been a fan of his for many years. Very handsome young man. Anyway. And I'll be. I'll look forward to meeting up with him at some point. Oh, he was he was very nice, very personable. Um, had a lot of fun. Um, I always, you know, I was a Twenty One Jump Street fan. Of course, I was a VIP fan with Pam Anderson. So, and I kind of watched him regularly for about five, six years on TV. So, yeah, it, it was very rare to have an Asian in, in a series at that point. Yeah, because in Jump Street, he didn't really do much, but in VIP, like he showcased all of his martial arts abilities. So I thought that was actually the, the role I preferred, to be honest with you. Ah, was was Liddy Denier in VIP? I don't think so. Oh, that must have been a different show then. I know okay. he's on Warrior now. And I think he does a lot of the sword work in that. Oh, fabulous. I love sword work. Do you know Mar do you study martial arts? Or did you study martial uh, arts? No, I'm a terrible martial artist. Oh, really? really? Yeah, I'm I'm really not good. I, I studied dance for a long time. Um, I don't quite have the brute force that uh, uh, some of the requirements are for martial artists. Um, I, you know, when I did, um, what's that movie, Double Dragon? Yeah, I was pretty hopeless in it, honestly. <laughs> I, I liked Double Dragon. I know a lot of people kind of got down on it because, you know, the video game fans, but Mark Dacascus, he's a legend. Uh, John, he Mallory, is. John Mallory Asher is one of the coolest guys I've met. I mean, it was just a fun film. Um, yeah, I mean, we had a great time making it. I think I was a little disappointed with the visual effects of, of what was that big creature? Yeah, toward the end, it was kind of hokey. Yeah, looking, he, but. I know, really. But um, uh, filming in Cincinnati was it was wonderful. Um, other than that, I, I mean, it's on Amazon, so you can watch it for, you know, for nothing, for Prime. I'm a fan. Uh, I got the Blu-ray collector set. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and I think really Scott Wolf did really well out of it. I mean, he had a he whole great career after Double Dragon. Yeah, I thought um, Mark Dacascus, would, he should have had a huge career. He should have been a huge action star. But, uh, I mean, he finally got a shot about a year ago. You know, the bad guy in John Wick 3. It doesn't get more prominent than that. Mm -hmm. I know. Can you believe he went into Iron Chef, which I've not seen any of, and it was the last thing I would ever expect Mark would be hosting. He's, um, you know, Mark is, is a little mixed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. he, he looks like a hero. He looks like a good guy. And a lot of times the stars or the, the actors that work really well in martial arts films look like bad guys, you know? Mm -hmm. They're tough and mean, and, and Mark kind of had a very youthful appearance, and that may have been a problem in casting. He, I mean, he made a good villain in um, Cradle to the Grave against Jet Li, but yeah, for the most part, like, all his films, I, I've always enjoyed. He, uh, great, amazing martial artist. So, yeah, I was, I was kind of figured after a drive or something, he'd get a, a big break, but... Um, you know, I mean, he works, makes great movies. He just never had that. I was kind of would hope to see more of him on the big screen, so to speak. It's not over till it's over. <laughs> and he was on Dancing with the Stars. He is a lot of years too. ahead of him. <laughs> Did you see him on Dancing with the Stars? Uh, I have not. Um, but honestly, he's he's um, a phenomenal person to work with. He actually did help me out enormously, and I'm very fond of Mark. Yeah, I'm hoping to interview him here in the next uh, week or two, I believe. Yay! Now, I, I have to ask you, because, you know, the, your first movie out of the gate was one of the biggest films of 85. I mean, you were in uh, Rambo, First Blood Part Two. Uh, do you have any memories of, like, working with Stallone or working on set, or was it intimidating for something that big to be your first film? Oh, it was, it was 
really frightening. Um, I actually had a girlfriend of mine is married to Robert Zemeckis, Leslie Zemeckis, and uh, I had uh, dinner with them one night. And it was so funny because I realized that that Back to the Future was number one in 1985 and Rambo was number two. So <laughs> that was kind of <laughs> cool. Um, we didn't expect it to be such a big blockbuster. I came out of, I was cast out of Honolulu and they had done this huge search to find a girl. Uh, I had been studying acting for uh, three years. I, you know, studied Shakespeare at UH with Terrence Knapp and then moved into an actor's workshop with Jack Hogan, who used to be on Kelly's Heroes. Um, and when Rambo came up, I mean, I really felt like, okay, this is it. This is my opportunity. I had literally, before I did Rambo, decided, well, what character can I play in Hollywood? Because there just weren't many Asian women on the screen. So I came up with this idea, because I'm born and raised in Southeast Asia, I can play a peasant. So I got myself one of those straw hats and a basket of fruit and some black, you know, pajamas from Chinatown. And I said, I said to my photographer friend, we're going to do a shoot of me as a peasant. So I was there with looking very much like a model with my basket of fruit and my straw hat. And she took some pictures and I used that picture actually to, you know, send to casting and that's when they called me in. Um, it, it's just really hysterical. So finally, after about four auditions, they uh, had me meet Stallone. He actually flew to to Honolulu. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm here with him. Do something. Like, make something happen. So I touched him, you know, mm -hmm. in part, as part of the scene. I just grabbed his arm. And it went, oh, his arm is not moving. I mean, it's a rock. Mm -hmm. and, and that got me to LA at the time of the Olympics for a very big 35 millimeter screen test. There was another whole slew of girls for competition in that. Um, I moved, I, I, I flew back to Honolulu because, you know, it's kind of weird after you do the audition, no one says, well, where are you going to be? Like, you know, are you hanging around? Are you going back? You just kind of leave the room. So I flew back to Honolulu. I mean, at their expense. And I, my boyfriend at the time picked me up at the airport and he says, oh, L.A. wants you to call. And I went, yeah, I'm not calling L.A. right now. We're going boating. So we went out on a boat. <laughs> and after our boat trip, I was at this phone booth at, at, on this road called Sandy Island Access Road. I mean, in the middle of nowhere. And I didn't, you know, this is when you had to put money in the phone. Mm -hmm. So I called them collect because I had not enough coins to call them. And that's when they told me I had, I, you know, the casting director, Rhonda Young, so sweet. She goes, have you ever seen yourself in 35 millimeter? And I said, no. And then she said, well, how would you like to spend uh, eight weeks in Acapulco? And that was it. It was, it was just um, extraordinary. Was it, um, were you kind of surprised? Like, you know, cause I remember, you know, there was the Reagan era and, you know, he's doing, um, you know, summits and conferences and newscasts quoting Rambo. Did you ever figure that it was going to have that kind of huge cultural impact on the world? It was really hard for me. At one point, uh, when we were doing publicity, I guess I said to someone, well, you know, uh, Rambo needed a girlfriend because you can't just have men going to see this film. They've got to bring their dates and there's got to be some romance in it to, you know, to, to make this a communal experience. So next thing I knew, they flew me to New York to do a whole slew of shows that I was not very well equipped to do, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and there I was on like CBS, you know, these really big anchors and they were asking me questions about, you know, the ramifications of this movie and what it really meant and the symbolism. And I'm just like, I'm just a girl in the, in the jungle <laughs> trying to rescue a guy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had to learn really quickly. But it, but it was extraordinary. I mean, I made Time Magazine. Rambo was everywhere, good or bad. It brought people into the theater. Uh, and it was a huge success. Did you? Are you surprised that, uh, you know, like we were just a year ago when we saw Rambo 6 and all these years later, and, and Stallone himself has alluded to there could still be yet another one 
It was five. Rambo five was what we saw last. Was five the right? Yeah, yeah. Was it five or let's see? There's one, two, three, four. Yeah, five. But he's alluding that there might be another one too. Yeah, and why not? Hey. I mean, you know, it keeps him young. It, it, it's um. Look, it's really hard for me just to get in shape for one film. And there he is doing it year after year after year. I really give him credit for that. Oh, he's 20-something years older than me, and he looks 50-something years younger. (laughs) He's strong. I I mean, he's disciplined. He's in that gym twice a day, even when he's filming. Um yeah, I, I think, you know, he's allowed to do what he wants to do. He's certainly earned the right to that. He has his niche. He has his audience. Um, not everybody is going to go see it. I actually still haven't seen the one that <laughs> that was in Afghanistan. I was actually in Israel with my my only husband, my then husband, and we were. he was doing a movie there, a big movie appointment with death with huge stars. And we went um, through Israel, you know, all these different places, and, and and we were at some resort place, and they were giving us free massages at one point. And the masseuse goes, "Yeah, Sly was was here. He was just here, because that's where they filmed um, Rambo Three. And and everywhere I went, every hotel we went to, Sly had just been there. It was extraordinary. <laughs> he caused quite a commotion." <laughs> You know, then you, you know, of case you have Stallone, arguably one of the greatest action stars of all time. And a few years later, you go with another one of the greatest action stars of all time, Chuck Norris, in uh, more of a family film's uh, Sidekicks. Uh, I had a, I am not going to lie, and I'm not ashamed to say it because I'm over the phone and I can't blush because I'm seeing you. I had such a crush on you in Sidekicks. You were so cute. I, 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 I really, because everybody was like, like all my friends, like, hey, the girl from the Wonder Years is in that. I was like, I don't care about her. I was just, she's too little. I was like, uh, I was like, I like Noreen Chan. She's hot. <laughs> oh, thank you. It was um, one of the sweetest films, probably the sweetest film I've made. I absolutely fell in love with Sidekicks. You know, such a great cast. Um, I got to to work with Mako, who was such an incredible oh, star. Truly. Um, Basically, he is revered in, in the Asian industry. He's um, got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He's he can play, even though you you told me recently that he doesn't do martial arts. He can look. He looks like he does martial oh, arts. He's he tough. Looks like a uh, monk right out of the uh, one of the old Shaw Brother films. I mean, yeah, it's it's a, it's uh, astounding. And he can do Shakespeare, he can do humor and comedy, he can do, you know, something where he's, you know, opposite um, uh, that very famous actor in Sand Pebbles, uh, what's his name? Oh, now I'm messing up. Um, <laughs> receiving a, receiving a, an Academy Award nomination, he's extraordinary. So, uh, Mako, he also played my dad in Rocker, Texas Ranger, which um, I was so thrilled to be working with him again. And uh, we we truly miss him. He just went too soon. He should have lived to 110. So you had a, a long relationship there with Chuck. Well, you know, I, I like that about Chuck. He brings people that he's worked with before onto whatever he does. I was fortunate to play a three-episode arc in Rocker, Texas Ranger, um, playing the same character, and um, you know, because I'm not a martial artist, so <laughs> I didn't. Um, I just played a doctor, and and later, um, you know, I was a single mom, and and Hollywood is is a very uh, up and down industry, and so at one point I said to them, hey, you know, I I really could use uh, some help, and and I know you guys have a loop troop to do the background voices, can I be part of the loop group? And they said, absolutely. So Aaron was the producer who also directed Sidekicks, and he brought me into the loop group. Now, do you know what looping is? I do. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to briefly explain it for people, because most people don't realize this. I won't lie that- to you. I won't lie to you. Branscom had to tell me what it was. <laughs> when you, Yeah, Branscom's a great looper. When you um, watch a film... You're only hearing the, 
the stars are, are being recorded, but nobody else is saying the word. Everyone in the background is going, peas and carrots, peas and carrots, silently to themselves. So all of that noise and all of the sounds of people making, as they say, hit the ground in Rocker, Texas Ranger when they've been thumped by, by Chuck Norris, they, um, that is done in the studio. So we create all that background voice and it's really good work when you can get it. So I worked, I did that for three years and then Mia Peoples came on the show. She's just fabulous, so beautiful. And she was the martial artist. So she did all these crazy fight scenes and I would do her efforts in the studio, you know, uh, 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 <laughs> kind of noises. <laughs> it was, it was great. I so enjoyed it. But that was you doing the kata in Sidekicks, wasn't it? I did, but, you know, kata is a little more dance-related, right? I mean, I mean, it was spotless, though. I mean, I'd put it right up there with uh, Cynthia Rothrocks, who's, you know, I mean, she's a forms champion, for God's sakes. Oh, well, I, was... I think Cynthia probably wouldn't, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I learned that in a week. I had a, a trainer, and it was my first time learning a kata. Oh, and after the third day, I, I walked up to Aaron, who was directing, Aaron Norris, and I mean, I could barely walk. I was limping considerably. And he was like, oh, Julia, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so he got me some kind of iguana repellent. <laughs> I don't know what it was. And I was supposed to rub down on my body every day. And, and, and somehow I got through it. So when I did sidekicks, I, um, I wanted to rehearse. Before we filmed it, and there are all these people in the stands, and I thought, this will be perfect. No one's filming in this area, but these people are here, so I'm just going to do it, you know, and get through a rehearsal. So I did it, and it was quite good, and I was very pleased at myself, and not a single person clapped, which I thought, oh, okay, maybe I wasn't <laughs> that good. And I walked out of the arena, and I realized that they were all cardboard cutout people. <laughs> they were just, every fifth person was exactly the same as the other. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we had great fun doing um, sidekicks. I love Jonathan very much. How, you know, because, you know, it's, it, you know, he, for, for those that don't know, he, he took his own life yeah, yes. years later. Um Said he was depressed about the acting career stalling out. What? Because he was still y fairly young in Sidekicks. How, how was he on the set? Did you guys? Was there anything about him that seemed sad or depressed, or was he just a, happy to be there, kind of a fun kid? No, but he's very precocious. Jonathan is like that. You know, he was already a big ti Tiger Beat star when he did Sidekicks. So he was on the cover of a multitude of teen magazines. Um, his parents are just wonderful people and, and very loving. Um, they were so broken up by his suicide. I, I think what happens with young people is they do have a, an extraordinary amount of success when they're young, and it does kind of flip when they get older mm -hmm. because casting directors, producers are not sure exactly how to cast them. Um, and I know he did a film, Hearts War, with Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. Previous to his passing, um, and I kind of joked with him, oh, were you a glorified extra? That's a terrible thing to say, but, you know, at some point we all pigeonhole ourselves in mm -hmm. certain uh, categories. And he goes, oh, were you there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there were a bunch of guys that were in the, you know, the core, the group of guys that were the soldiers under Bruce Willis. I didn't see the movie, so I don't know. Um, and I think they may have gotten into a bit of trouble over there. <laughs> um but something kind of clicked, and, you know, I think he became very sad and, and upset about where his life was going. It seemed like when he took his life, it was a very random, very quick decision. I can't say that he thought about it a long time. I'd seen him about uh, three months prior, and it, he was great. We had a great time. We went to um, a Hollywood party together. And we were supposed to bring wine, so we each had a bottle of wine because there was, this person was celebrating their new house in their wine cellar. So we kind of looked at each other, and, you know, he's he's very mischievous. And we walked into the wine cellar, and we put our two bottles down and left with one very expensive bottle. 
<laughs> and when I was drinking, nobody knows the story now about except you, me, and you know who I was listening. Um, <laughs> and had a lovely evening, and then that was the last time I saw him. Do you um, were you ever think that they would make like a follow up to that movie? Because it, I mean, it had a it has a huge cult following. But to my knowledge, I don't even know if it has a proper DVD release yet. What sidekicks? Yeah. Sidekicks, I wondered about the DVD, you know, because everywhere I went, I had, you know, younger people, family people saying, I really like Sidekicks. It was such a fun movie. And and where's the DVD? And I had no answer for them. I've and, only and seen part, bootlegs of it. Partly, yeah, I made some bootlegs of it, but I didn't <laughs> sell them. <laughs> but but partly it's it was um, produced by Mattress Mac. Mattress Mac is famous in Houston. He used to sell mattresses on the side of the road, and then he opened up his mattress store. And he's just one of those guys, very uh, um, outgoing, who who was so kind to his community. In fact, even during the flood, um, he opened up his his store so people could come in and rest and and sleep on his mattresses in the store. Mm. I mean, the church didn't even do that. So I'm not going to mention the name of the person who owned that church, but um, <laughs> he didn't even do that. So Mattress Mac decided he wanted to make a movie, and he was talking to uh, a swimmer, an Olympic swimmer about it, who wanted him to finance his film. And Chuck happened to be at that cocktail party, and Chuck overheard. And so he kind of eventually took Mattress Mac away, and said, you know, I've got a much better script for you. I don't know that Chuck had any script at that point, but he certainly got one. And uh, it happened to be sidekicks. And that's and that's how it came to be made. It was private money. So um, while we were filming, you know, um, Mac would come, and he didn't know the filming process, and he would watch, and he'd go, look, as a businessman, he said, we can make this film in a much quicker time. All these people <laughs> standing around should be doing things. <laughs> and we had to explain to him, well, makeup just does makeup, and lighting's just do light. Mm -hmm. So it was quite awakening. I don't know that he, I, he either didn't ha want to put the money into making the DVD, maybe had to deal with the studios at that point who had studio that had acquired it. Maybe the studio didn't want to put it out, but it is now available on YouTube for free. Yes. That's, I, yeah. I rewatched the uh, Joe Piscopo, Chuck Norris fight uh, uh, not that long ago. <laughs> yeah. I, I have fond memories of that. I think that was my disappointment was that, you know, because of course it's, there's Karate Kid inspiration there and, you know, Jonathan Brandis, you know, he's tormented by this kid through the whole film and they have a little scuffle in the gym, but, you know, they're at the big tournament at the end and they don't fight each other. It's a brick break. I was kind of like, well, I wanted to see him beat this other kid up. What's, what's going on here? Well, let's do something a little, you know, I mean, Jonathan was not a, a brawny guy and he probably knew very little martial arts <laughs> so you have to work with you know the talent that you, you decided to cast uh, but you know um i remember that year arnold schwarzenegger came out with a film that kind of had a similar premise that you know we didn't know when we were filming and i did watch that film and i thought ours was much better the last action hero Yes, exactly. Well, the last thing she wrote made it dumb is here's this kid that lives in a in this horrible crime ridden apartment. He he can't go outside without getting mugged, and he goes into this beautiful Hollywood world. Why doesn't he take his mom into the beautiful Hollywood world? He goes back to his shithole apartment in a crime ridden area. If it, if you really look at it past the credits, it's a depressing ending. Yeah, I don't remember it, but I just thought um, you know I'm just going to stick with my premise. Ours was better. <laughs> We, you know, you had Chuck, who arguably, I've always said, uh, you know, in a real life fight, Chuck Norris is going to be world champion. He's, he's going to win that fight. But, you know, two years later, you worked with one of my other favorite martial artists, Gary Daniels. And I believe White Tiger might have been his first uh, first major role here. You know, I forgot to look that up. Um, it could be. He's... Um so handsome, Gary. My God. And and my dad uh, was British, um, and so I'm very fond of British men. Um, <laughs> we we bonded very much because we had both read this book called Shike by Robert Shea. 
And Chike was um, sort of an assassin, martial artist, Buddhist monk. And, and he fell in love with a Japanese woman named Taniko during the Mongol invasion of Japan. And so I always felt like, I'm Taniko and this is my Shike with Gary. <laughs> and, and, you know, we, so we had a great time. It was not um, a fully fleshed out script. Um, I did it because there aren't a lot of roles for Asian women, especially back then. And so sometimes you just take what you can get and try to, you know, create something magical out of it. So I did create a backstory for Jade for my character because her, her, her impetus, her, what she was trying to accomplish made no sense in the film. So I asked them to give me a scene at the end where, um, I have a reunion with my child. And so the premise of it being that my child had been kidnapped by the triads and everything I was doing was in order to get my child back. And that sort of fleshed everything out and made this, the plot line more sense. So at the end, you see me, Dana Lee, who plays, you know, the triad leader, comes with my kid, and I embrace my kid, and then you understand why she did went through all the manipulations that she did. Um, it's beautifully filmed. Uh, yeah. You, know, you want to add to that? <laughs> I mean, you've got, what's not to like? I mean, you've got Gary Daniels and you've got uh, Carrie Tagawa uh, together in a film. Uh, it was just amazing. It was... Uh, I'm a huge uh, Gary Daniels fan. I, I I think I own, and I've had to outsource him from other countries, every film he's made. And and he's still making them. The guy, st he looks about the same, for God's sakes. He does. We just saw each other recently. Every now and then we run into each other. It's so great. We go off in a corner and we just chat, 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 chat. Talk about, you know, White Tiger and what he's doing. And, uh, and he still looks amazing. I have a picture of him and I on my Instagram page. <laughs> See, when I interviewed him, it had to be done via email. So I, I, I submitted him the questions, and, and he gave very nice, detailed answers. But unfortunately, I was not able to talk to him. I'm, I'm hoping to change that here within the next year. But uh, no, and my wife is, has always been a huge fan of his, especially when he had the long ponytail. She, uh, she knows exactly who uh, he is as well. <laughs> yeah, he's another one. You know, the martial artists, they're so disciplined, honestly. They work incredibly hard like, you know he can still probably do the splits and all kinds of kicks and and i know he gets frustrated because you know he doesn't none of us work as much as we want to work um but he's definitely uh one of one of the handsome men that i worked with well sp speaking of handsome men did you get to meet the great uh legend to me Samo hung when you did the the work on uh, martial law no, oh. um, I, I think I only looped martial law. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty like sure I just episode, looped yeah. it. No, no, Kelly did martial law. Um, oh, no, I knew she's were, a real. You were a loop group. I knew. I just didn't know if you got to meet anybody on set that day, or if it was recorded somewhere well, else. No, we do it in the studio. But Kelly is uh, extraordinary. I mean, she. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you interviewed her, but her no, story is she used to I get. She got. She got beat up at school badly. She's from Hawaii, and the, the locals would beat her up. So she learned to be a martial artist, which I think was fantastic. And she's the real thing. No, I'm a, a big fan. I'm, I'm trying to interview her. So some uh, she's, she's definitely on the list. And she's still active, too. She does a lot of the DC Marvel stuff she pops up in now. Yeah, because, you know, that was the thing. I should not have been a dancer. I should have been a martial artist. You could fake it perfectly good, though. I was convinced you were a black belt after seeing sidekicks. Oh, you're very, very funny. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, and then we talked off air. Charm will get me everywhere. <laughs> you know, you, you, you did my favorite show there. Uh, we talked about it before we recorded. L.A. Heat, the PM Entertainment, Wolf Larson, Stephen Williams show. Uh, you know, you popped up in a lot of amazing stuff. Yes, I'm fortunate. I have a pension. You know, I have Social Security coming. I, I'm very, very lucky. Um, I think the film, I think when I did Rambo in 1985, there were only three films with Asian girls in them. And we were all not very well fleshed out characters. You know, none of us were, you know, like real leading lady roles. But there were three of us, and that was it. You know, some years were very, very scarce. 
in those years, we could make in one film enough money to live for a whole year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I did something like Noble House, and I made enough money to live for a year. And uh, Around the World in 80 Days, you know, also with Pierce Brosnan. Um, so those were good days. You didn't have to do a multitude. Now it's a lot different. The money's a lot less for us. You did a Power Ranger episode. You know, with, with Branscombe. Oh, was he in that one? Was that the... the yes, he plays my husband. Was Isaac Florentine the director of, of that particular series, or had he already come and gone? I don't know, because I only worked a day or two oh. on it. Yeah. I watched it when I was, I was like fresh out of high school and it started, so I had watched it a while. My son was like heavily into it, and he was younger. I mean, that's another one that all these years later, it's still going strong. Well, you know, and then they have, you know, different um, productions of power. Of, of that show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it continues in a different format. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't, you know, it wasn't like, uh, I want to go do, what is it, Power? I think you were on Power Force. Power Force. I, I you know, it wasn't like I decided, oh, I want to do the show. But there are certain shows where they call for Asian artists because they are, you know, martial art, arts based. Did you ever think of going, like, to start doing films in Hong Kong? Oh, I did try once. It's very funny. Um, before I got Rambo, I, I was flown there with two other girls, and, and they ended up um, flying us in, auditioning, auditioning uh, flying us in, giving us dinner, auditioning us the next day, and then sending us home that night. So they only had to pay for one hotel room, uh, one hotel <laughs> night. I mean, we were exhausted. Uh, I did not get that that deal um i know the girl who did um but one day recently jim lao who is very well known um he comes up to me he goes you don't remember me do you and i go from before he goes yeah i said no not really where did we meet he goes well i was your i was the director in hong kong when you went i was the one you know getting trying to uh you know do an audition with you I went, oh, my God, I had no idea. So it was so funny many years later to meet someone that I had met during my very first film audition experience. Um, and, and funny for them because, you know, then after I didn't get that movie, I was in the second biggest movie in the world. <laughs> <laughs> did you like filming uh, in Hawaii for Magnum? Yes, I did. I did very small roles. I was... Um, quite awful honestly i i won't lie to you and and this makes people mad i've talked to several people from magnum i've never seen a single episode of magnum pi oh it's such a fun show the original now we're talking about the original it's wonderful the new one is great too i was only Um, like six when magnum came out and like I mean, I watched the A team, but like Magnum was almost, I don't want to say it was like too grown up for me. It just wasn't my thing. And I believe it or not, a few years ago, I got the big DVD set to, uh, from one of the studios and I have yet to sit down and actually watch it. it. It's moving closer to the pile as I talk to people that have been on the show. Yeah, you, you, you will enjoy it. Uh, Tom, you know, he struggled for years and then he came to do Magnum and they were ready to start up and then there was a strike. So then he had to like fill in time, you know, before he, they started filming. But I have to tell you for those, cause I lived in Hawaii at the time and, and for those of us who were models and it was just so exciting and, and we were just thrilled because, um, it was, it was not just an action show. Hawaii Five O was great, you know, the one that preceded it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Magnum had such a, a flavor to it, such a contemporary flavor, improvisational humor, and and um, and he was so sexy in his short shorts. <laughs> yeah, I've always been jealous that I I look like a goon when I have a mustache, so I have to do a full beard. So anybody that can support, you know, a nice mustache, I'm always jealous of because I, I, I can't do it. He was also really, really kind. Uh, when you were new on the show, well, I don't know if he was kind to everybody, but I, I think he was. It was his nature just to be very, very caring to people that were, you know, treading new water. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
and and very good, you know, to me. I didn't, I wasn't friends with him per se, but uh, but just in that professional basis. And then later on, I did a show for him with. Um, uh, oh, yeah, see, I knew I had to write names down. <laughs> um, a very famous actor, uh, who was in a lot of big movies. And, um, it, it wasn't a great show, but, uh, James, do, 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 never mind, I know so many James now. So we, um, you can cut this part, right? You can edit I this can't part out, like right? <laughs> no, no, you know, I'm just joking. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, so I, I got to work with him, not uh, on screen again, but he was producing it. You did Nash Bridges too, correct? Yes, yes. Now that I watched. Uh, I did two episodes of Nash Bridges, and I really um, had a great time working with Don Johnson. He's uh, he's, he's got a very... Um, sarcastic sense of humor and i'm looking up my credits now so i, I get mean, them all great. straight i mean he's popped up in some tarantino films he's still going strong well you know i was uh, i was just in awe of him from miami vice and there's something about don that he just has extraordinary charm um so i i was in one of the episodes and I had this gangster boyfriend. And one day, um, I get a call from a girlfriend to, she needs people to donate blood, uh, platelets specifically for a child that has cancer. And I go, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. So I go down and I donate the platelets. Um, and then I find out a couple of months later that the child I donated platelets for was my gangster boyfriend's child. Oh. Yeah, and Hunter unfortunately passed away. Mm. I didn't know that, but I, I just, I was grateful I could do some little thing, mm -hmm. you know? You did voice work in Mile 22 recently, too, didn't you? Ah. Uh, With Mark Wahlberg. Oh, yes. Yes, that is a film they did in Indonesia. Yeah, it had a, um, I'm going to butcher this guy's name and I hate to do it because I'm such a fan. Uh, Iko Uwas. He's incredible. He's I have never seen a guy fight like that ever in my life. He's so awesome to watch. I think he's starring in other movies now, but he really, um, I watched that fight scene where he was in the hospital bed handcuffed mm -hmm. and he just took everybody out that came in. Um, and I'm really, uh, you know, it, it's kind of uh, difficult to do foreign films because my my Malay is good, but I'm not fluent in Malay, and so we had we had to speak Malay. And yet, you know, you just you just do what you can. Um, it's how you make a living. Branscom knows this. You just you just fake whatever you don't know. <laughs> he was in. If you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. This amazing uh, foreign film, triad film called The Night Comes for Us. It has got to be, it, it's so violent. You know, it, it's to the point where it's like you're getting tired. You're like, how many more people is this guy going to kill, you know, before this ends? But oh my God, I, I've, I've never seen anybody move like that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely someone to watch. Um, James Coburn. Okay, oh. I should not have forgotten James Coburn's name, but I played opposite him in Silver Fox, and that's what Tom Selleck produced. Um, we were hoping it would be a pilot, but it, it didn't happen. Uh, but I got to kiss James Coburn. How cool is that? <laughs> Do you prefer film or TV? I actually enjoy TV better. I like the pace. It's a little faster. I like the format. Um, I always think that you look better on a smaller screen than a big screen. <laughs> I, think, I think you look fine on either. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I always wanted to do a series, and I've never done a series. I've only done, um, you know, semi-recurring roles. I actually um, love doing this episode of Sequest. I don't know if you ever saw that. I remember the show. 
You do? Mm -hmm. That's why some of the writers was on that the show, um, Marshall, the Marshall Kelly Who show oh, that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the writers was on, on that, and he loved the episode I did. Um, it it was a, a fantastic character, and it was supposed to reoccur. One day I, I came to the set and I saw my name was on a chair. And I said, why is my name on a chair? Because they don't give that to the guest stars, only to the regulars. And they said, oh, well, you're the new regular. And I said, well, nobody told me. And that's because <laughs> that show got canceled that day. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah. And Jonathan was in the show. Jonathan co-starred in it. Yeah, and, Jonathan uh, Brandis was a co-star. And uh, Peter DeLuise. And Mike Mike Delaware. Yeah, they were both in there. I like both of them. Yeah. Don't know. I, I like either Mike. One. <laughs> I haven't seen either. I one knew. In a I, I of knew years. someone that dated Mike ah. in Hawaii, and and so I told him when I first met him, I set him up. I said, "Oh, hi, nice to meet you. You know, I'm really glad to be here. You know, I I read palms, so maybe I can read your palm one day." And he got really excited. <laughs> So a couple of days later, I went and read his palm and told him all about his girl, this this friend of mine that he dated, and he kind of turned pale and went, "Wow, you're really good." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to do things like that. What does he do now? Any idea? I haven't seen either of the Delaware brothers. In, I haven't seen either of them. I know I, uh, uh, Peter, I think directs, or he did for a while. Uh, Mike did some theater. I I think he was on Gilmore Girls for a while, and unfortunately, his his dad passed away. His mom passed away. Um, I I I think they're you know I I know that they want to work, but as is this business, sometimes you have a flurry of work, and then sometimes you kind of sit on the sidelines for a while. So I'm not really sure what's happening. I haven't seen him for about a year. I, I always remember him because uh, the night of my high school graduation was the night that the movie Encino Man with Polly Shore and Brandon Frazier opened, and he was the bad guy in that movie, so to speak. And I decided to not go to my graduation and go see that movie instead. So when my son or wife ever asks me about graduation, I can tell them that I saw uh, Michael DeLuise instead in Encino Man, <laughs> <laughs> which had to be a lot more fun than sitting in a crowded room waiting to get a piece of paper. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> That's shame on you. <laughs> I had to go up to the school a week later just be like, can I have my diploma? I wasn't at the graduation. <laughs> I guess it's the only thing they don't call roll for it, so I think we're yeah, lucky. <laughs> I, just, I had no desire to go, so I knew I graduated. I didn't need to sit there. So, Well, I'm really happy to have talked to you. I am uh, too. I'm, I had a, I had a really nice time. So look forward to listening to all the podcasts now. And uh, Branson's been a friend for a very long time. He has the most beautiful wife that I used to model with. But I always felt like I was just, you know, the junior model and she was like the diva. <laughs> um, I, I actually did a lot of work in Hawaii at that time. But to me, Le Ma epitomized a Parisian model, even though she was, you know, uh, what we call a local girl. Um and she's like six foot. So we'd walk down the ramp together. And, and I enjoyed ramp and I was good at it. But every now and then they would put me with Le Ma on this other beautiful six foot model. And I'd go, why are they emphasizing how short I am? I couldn't understand <laughs> it. Um, but she's just lovely. And they've been married for, I remember Branson coming to a show. And we all kind of looked at him with suspicion, you know. Hollywood type actor. Hmm, is he good enough for our Le Ma? We're not sure. <laughs> I had, uh, you know, I've only known him now for a couple months, and you know, it it been. I think recently, about a week ago, I was like, you know, I've never asked you how long have you been married. And he just went long time. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the answer. So. Yeah, I got to stay with them in in Maui uh, once, so that was great fun. You know, thank you. Um, I had a, you have a you have a beautiful voice. I, I just need to stress that again. I can see why you get so much voice work. Um, it, this was very fun. I I really hope you had a nice time. I, I'd hope one day that you could uh, come back and tell some other stories. Yes, I'm going to do a film in Hong Kong. 
um, coming up probably mid November. It's a very naughty film about um, very highly paid models in Hong Kong, European models. And my friend Byron Mann has written it and is producing it and starring in it. Uh, it's definitely an R rated movie, but I'm just playing his mom. And she's a great character, so I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I hope you'll come back and, and promote it, and, uh, you know, because that would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. I so appreciate you.